Okay, everyone. Reporting in progress. Hi, everyone. This is Stephanie Immelman, um, CEO from the Delray Beach Chamber. We're so excited to have you today. We've got lots of our partners on because everybody wants to hear from U.S. Representative Lois Frankel. We're anxious to hear all the background on what's going on. So I'm going to kick it over to Michael Weiner, who will do a quick introduction. Well, so I, I had the privilege of introducing Representative Frankel on many occasions. So I I had to mix it up because I always say the same things. But what do you say about somebody who was the mayor of West Palm Beach, who was the minority leader in the state of Florida for the Democratic Party in Tallahassee? So we were doing single words the other day. So I decided indomitable. So synonyms for indomitable are invincible, unconquerable, unbeatable, unassailable, and seriously, that is what Lois Frankel has been. Um, can you imagine making it up the political ladder in the state of Florida, being a Democratic woman? And she has truly, as she made it up that ladder, brought all parties together. That's enough to say about her, because she's going to now tell us why it is that we are not all bankrupt and haven't turned our pants pockets outside uh, <laughs> the last 24 hours. So please, Representative Frankel, we're always glad to see you in Delray. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Michael. Oh, boy, oh boy, I have to take you with me to my speaking engagements. Thank you. <laughs> I write speeches. I do do that. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, hello, everybody. So good to see you again. And I have a, uh, as my team, have you been introduced yet, Felicia and Becca? Hi, Felicia is my chief of staff and Becca is my legislative director. Do we have anybody else on team on the Call Felicia. Okay, everybody no, that's else. It. Everyone okay. else is at meetings this morning. Okay. All right. Well, hello. well, let's just say uh we've just finished up probably the most intense week I've had in my political career. Um, if you like, I'll tell you a little bit about the, yeah. like, uh, about what happened with the budget, with the uh dead ceiling vote. Okay, well, this was truly a dangerous situation. I can, I'll tell you this now, you probably knew it, but it really was. And, uh, you know, raise, the, the rate, when you raise a debt ceiling, it's a problem, not, to, not to give you a long lesson, is basically you're agreeing that we, the United States pay our bills, uh, whether, whether it's paying social security or making sure we have the air traffic controllers. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, it is something that is done routinely. It has been re routine, routinely done for 60 times in, in, our, in modern times. And um, if, if, I, if you remember back to when we were trying to elect the speaker, remember that round robin of 15 votes that everybody was watching C-SPAN? Uh, the, 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 the way that the speaker was actually able to secure the votes, uh, it's a very close vote uh, in Congress, was to make some very uh, severe promises to 20, uh, maybe 20 or more Republican members who are very hardcore, right? And uh, one, one of the things he promised was that uh, he would not agree to raising the debt ceiling unless there were very serious cuts to uh, to our spending and uh, some serious changes to some of the uh, lifeline programs, such as uh, SNAP, which which feeds hungry, poor, under-resourced people or disabled people. So. Uh, you know, you know, we just, uh, and I'm giving you my point of view, obviously. So it was almost like a hostage situation. Uh, we were basically, <clears throat> the president was told by the speaker that unless we made what at the point at that time was, would have been very, very serious cuts. It was like a 22% cut to our budget they were not gonna to vote to raise the debt ceiling. So it was like, 
That, and now what did that mean if we didn't raise the debt ceiling? Millions of people would have lost their job, including over a thousand people here in Palm Beach County. Our retirement accounts would be diminished. The stock market would have plummeted. Uh, uh, people would not have gotten their social security checks the parade of horrors, uh, access to health care gone. So uh, for people who depended on Medicare and Medicaid, so it was a nightmare situation. So if you were nervous about it, you should have been. I was worried, although worried but optimistic. I couldn't imagine that we would allow this to happen. And uh, the speaker and the president and their team went into very intense negotiations over the past couple of weeks. And finally we came up with a, they came up with a, uh, a bill that probably neither side would have written by themselves. But you know, the art of compromise is what can you live with? What can you live with? Uh, for me, it was never uh, a question <laughs> that I was gonna vote to raise the debt ceiling. I mean, they're just because the, the economic consequences would be too devastating. But so we came up with something again. It's got um, everyone can breathe easier. And uh, we've agreed uh, there will not be, uh, we were not going to go through this for at least another two years. All right, that's good. So the jobs have been saved and the stock market saved, and uh, people are getting their social security checks. Uh, but some things were cut. Probably um, the biggest consequence, we don't really know yet because we haven't got into our, uh, our negotiations yet on how we're gonna spend the 2023 money. We, we got what's called a top line and what, we, what was agreed to was, but uh, the, we'll see when, when those negotiations start, which I think is next week, right, Becca? I'm on the committee where we, uh, that spends the money. I think we'll start next week and we'll see where, the, where those cuts go because there will be some, I mean, hard choices. Will, will children lose their daycare slots? Will we have to spend less, less money on education, uh, less money on research, research? I mean, every part of your life is touched by government. So we'll, we'll see exactly what, what uh, that result is. There was something that was really positive, And that was, uh, we agreed to fully fund health care for our veterans. And just to let you know, that was a real issue. Uh, last week, or, or maybe it was last week, the week before, uh, I was I was about to go to a committee meeting where we were where we were going to vote on the budget for the for veterans for, for uh, health for, for 2024 and the Republican proposal cut veterans health by billions of dollars and did not fund um, our promise to help the veterans who had been exposed to toxic chemicals in warfare. And we put up a big protest. I say we, the Democrats did. And uh, that proposal was pulled back. And I think it, uh, and then taken off the table uh, by this agreement. So this was a good week for our veterans who deserve to be, obviously to have the health care that, that they, that they deserve. So that's just sort of a, an overview. If you have any specific questions, um, it's it's uh, was a very interesting vote. Uh, you need, I think you need something like, you need 218 votes to pass a bill in the House. And we, it did pass 314 to 117, but here's the irony of it. <laughs> the, we were 165 Democrats voted for it, 149 Republicans. And I, what I think the irony was is that the, the Republicans who forced us into this situation all voted against the bill. 
that was sort of crazy. So uh, anyway, the bill went to the Senate last night it, on a bipartisan basis. So I think we can fairly say, though, this was done on a bipartisan basis. And um, there will be some pain. I, I, I didn't like some of the provisions on the food security. Uh, and I did like some of the provisions on the food security, sort of a trade off. Uh, but with that, listen, we all live to, we're living for another day. And look, elect, elections have consequences. And so, and compromise, as I said, compromise, every, people, not everybody gets what they want, but I think uh, overall, we did the right thing for America by not defaulting. That's for sure. So does anyone have any questions on that? So, so I, tell us yeah. who best allies um, and uh, on the Republican side? Maybe you can't mention names, I don't know, but. Well, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think there was only one, or maybe Becca could help me with this. In Florida, I, don't, I think there was only one Republican who voted for the debt bill. I think that was Jimenez, right? Is that right, Becca? It was pretty split. I know Bill Arrakis voted for it. Um, Mario diaz Ballard voted for it. Mario, okay. I'm Mario, sure yeah. Salazar did. Yeah, I can pull it up here. Yeah, we, but it's interesting. In Florida, most of the Republicans voted against it, and we had two Democrats, and Wilson was the only one who voted against it. On the Dem side, yeah. 10 out of the 20 Republicans voted yes, 10 voted no. So they were split. So it was it was split uh, Republicans and all the Democrats voted yes except for Representative Wilson who uh, was it was really a protest boy, vote vote because the bill uh, re reduced the uh, eligibility for for uh, on on the SNAP benefits uh, raised the age requirement on the SNAP benefits as as for food for under-resourced people. And that that would hit women of color hardest. So she was upset with that. And uh, so there we are for the rest of our delegation. I mean, we don't have that many Democrats, but uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, myself, Moskowitz, and um, Kathy Castor, and Darren Soto, and Max Frost, uh, we voted for it. So one of my follow-up question. Yeah. When do we have to do this again. Is it 2026? Am I right about that? When when does it when does it we come to crunch time again? Well, the... we we have stalled it off for at least two years. So mm -hmm. you know, I guess it we probably will have to do yeah, there's no question about it. We probably will have to do it again, although it's not it doesn't uh let's say the agreement was to, to wait until after the next election. Mm -hmm. At least. <laughs> yeah. Look, it's supposed to be routine. Hopefully it doesn't come to something like this again. It really shouldn't. Because we we yes. have time to negotiate. I mean, what we really to, need to do is there are other, there were other venues to negotiate these other issues. Uh, and this sort of sped it up and really, Truthfully, what it meant is that less members got input on some of these issues because it was it was negotiated, you know, by a handful of people. Well, it's All right. So, as well, I said, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm sorry. As routine as the electrical electrical college, so <laughs> we don't know. It's too bad. One last one last thing, and then I, 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 you know, for for Delray, you can please tell us what the yeah. federal is involving Delray. Um, but uh, you know, it can become a self fulfilling prophecy. I, Florida is being seen more and more as a red state, and you know, I'm I'm a Republican, uh, but but I I do worry about the tipping, and and about our profile. Um, tell us a little bit about districting. Tell us a little bit about you and, and, and Mr. Moskowitz and Broward and Palm Beach County. 
what yeah. do you what do you see for us on the horizon? Well, I, I'll tell you, Florida, our, our reputation is so terrible for anybody who has got middle to left politics, even just moderate people. I, 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 it's unbelievable what people are starting to think. I mean, because I hear it from all from people all over the country. Obviously I say with people all over the country, but this, this, our legislature, governor legislature went too far with its, uh, what they call their anti-wokeness because between the abortion ban and the uh, book banning and the uh, anti-LGBTQ stuff that was fo focused on, uh, I could go on and on the voter suppression I mean, it's not, listen, I, I do not agree with uh, the, the, the so-called boycotts. I mean, my preference is uh, I, let's fight it, not, not run away from it. That's my, that's how I feel about this situation. Uh, but the, what I am concerned about, and I think you should too, is and what's happening on the college campuses. And especially you look at uh, where they're about to get a new college president at FAU. Uh, look, this should not be a, Florida should not become a haven for right-wing thinking. It just should not. And uh, people need to, and our, our children need to be able to grow up to develop their own minds and their own political opinions and, and uh, indoctrination uh, on, on is not a good thing. It's not a good thing to indoctrinate them one way, one way or the other, other than to teach them the, you know, good values of respect and kindness and, uh, you know, honesty. And that's something we can all agree on. But I mean, th we have school boards that are taking books about the Holocaust off, about Rosa Parks or, or off the table. I mean, uh, and a, a real consequence of what's going on, I'm gonna tell you right now, is the teacher shortage. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a 5,000 teacher shortage in this state. Teachers are not going to flock here, folks. They are not gonna to wanna to, uh, teach in our, in our public schools. So, there are there's consequences to some of the uh, these actions, and you know when you when you look at polling for the average Floridian, they are not the Floridians are, are not extreme, really one way or the other. Really, okay, then you have to find some extreme left, some maybe extreme right, but you know for the most the most the people just want to raise their families or live here peacefully, make a living give their children opportunities. Uh, they're not into all this banning, banning, banning. So uh, that, that worries me a lot. Uh, on a better note, on a higher point, I wanna tell you that a couple of years ago, and this was after a 10 year low, um, legislators, we agreed that we would have what's called community projects where members of Congress could designate a certain projects in their district uh, that we that we would fund, and um, so which is terrific because otherwise the president of the United States, whether he was a Democrat or Republican, was deciding where this money was going. So uh, our team worked uh, with our local folks, including your, uh, including Delray and some of our social, social service, United Way. And we were able to get some good allocations for Delray uh, in the last couple of budgets. We were able to get Delray uh, money for, uh, for the Boys and Girls Club, for the water system. Uh, let's see, there's some other things. I know, I try to, I, I can't memorize any of this, but Becca, no. you have that list, don't you? 
Yes. Okay, uh, just tell them what we were able to get them in the last couple of years. Yeah. So in 2022, we got $1 million for um, AVDA, Aid to Victims of Domestic Abuse, based in Delray. And then for 2023, so those grants will be going out this year, we got the city of Delray Beach, three and a half, almost three and a half million uh, for the city's water system. And we also got 1 million for Wayside House, um, a substance abuse rehabilitation center. And then this year we have a Delray, we put in requests. We now, again, this budget is so much in flux. I don't know what uh, we will get, but we put in for Delray a request for the their water repump stations for a license plate reader that comes from your uh, police department and uh, more money for Boys and Girls Club for a new facility that'll be in Delray Boys and Girls Club. So th those were for Delray. Then we had a number of items that, that we put in for the county. We, we've done a lot of funding for the Palm Beach State College. Last year, we got them a million dollars to train their faculty on uh, artificial uh, <laughs> intelligence. I keep thinking calling it artificial inspiration. It's artificial intelligence. Uh, and we've got we've gotten the money uh, in the last couple of years for different training programs. So uh, it's really been a good system. Now, again, I don't know how I think these, the amount of money that we're going to get for these projects will be limited only because our budget's going to be uh, reduced. But I, let, let me just, I want to just say one more thing about this, this fight. Uh, and, for, and, and just with, with, I want to, with fairness to the people who voted against the bill. And the Democrats who voted against it had different reasons than the Republicans. But let me let me ju just say this: one of the big concerns was the federal deficit, uh, which I think is now about thirty-one or thirty-two trillion dollars. I'm not really sure where we are with that, but it's something like that. Uh, and the there is an issue. The big issue is. Uh, you know, how, how do we deal with it? Because we need to deal with it. It's not something to ignore. Uh, but for me and my own philosophy, and I think many, many the people who who voted for the bill and it was a a, a compromised vote was, was a feeling that uh, to not to default would be catastrophic for too many people. We're living in a time where we've just come out of a pandemic. I don't have to tell you this. Inflation has been high, going down in some areas. You look at Palm Beach County, housing has become too costly for too many people. We have so many hungry people here, you would not believe it. If you haven't had an occasion to get on the, on the, uh, a Zoom with people from United Way or some of our food programs, uh, you should, because it is eye-opening to understand how many people in this county and people who are working and people who are children do not have food. It's amazing, or enough food. So uh, in my, you know, my perspective on this is, when people are hurting and when they are in need, it is not a time to take away their lifelines. So I'm not going to reduce the deficit so that, and, and literally so, so that a child goes to sleep hungry. It's just not going to be what I'm going to do. There are ways to reduce the deficit. The president had, we had money in the budget for IRS to go after tax cheats. And, uh, we asked the Republicans if we if we could pull back on the Trump tax cuts that went to only really the very wealthy into corporations. Uh, we said let let Medicare fully negotiate its 
prescription drugs because that will reduce the cost of how much government pays for drugs. I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can reduce a budget or reduce a deficit without hurting people. And so uh, that's, that's the philosophical difference uh, in terms of the deficit. Uh, uh, anyway, and for me, the most important and best way to reduce a deficit is to have people working and paying taxes. And that is, uh, that means not only not defaulting, but that's making, making sure that people can put their children in a, in a daycare, in a quality daycare while they go to work. That's just one example. So why would you cut your daycare slots and force parents to, to mostly mothers to stay home and not work and pay their taxes? Doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, that's really, you know, just a sort of a, a, a look into some of the thinking and some of the debate that was going on. Um, I know, Vivian, you had a question, right? I do. First, I want to say thank you, Representative Frankel, for all you're doing on behalf of our nation, for your heart and your intelligence, your perspective. It's so meaningful and so important, particularly at this time, and so appreciated. Um, I am a uh, safety net behavioral, I represent a safety net behavioral health provider here in South Florida, Henderson. Um, we're a CCBHC. We, we serve unlimited number of indigent folks with behavioral health, health, and uh, uh, conditions. And we, I'm particularly concerned what's going to happen in terms of with this reduction exercise with Medicare, Medicaid, and behavioral health services. So my question is in regards to that, what you anticipate will happen. It's a very good question. You know, that's another insight into the fight, uh, which is, I mean, who, there's going to be a hit on our spending. There's no question about it. And, you know, it's, oh... Uh, it's very easy to, <laughs> you know, when you're, until you get dig in and see what it is that's going to be cut. See, you say, oh, yeah, let's spend less. Okay, yeah, I'd love to spend less. I'd love everybody to be working and healthy and happy and, you know, not have veterans committing suicide and young girls. I mean, you, you know this probably better than the rest. Uh, you know, the recent reports just on teenage girls the depression, the potential for suicide, the drug addiction in this country, uh, the, the fentanyl that's killing people. I mean, a lot going on. You're, those who are, don't have family members that are involved in any of this, you're very blessed. So, but we just have to see. I, I'm on, I am on the subcommittee that does handle health and human services. I can tell you this, uh, before these negotiations, we were looking at a 22% cut. I mean, that, that is what it meant literally losing, you know, uh, just m millions and millions of dollars for every, billions, I should say, for every area of health. So <clears throat> we avoided that. We'll keep you posted. I... You know, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that, you know, we're investing properly with, with, our, with our dollars. Uh, I'll tell you something else you all should be worried about. Oh, this is a great day for, uh, for your the great mental health day. I'll give you something else to worry about. Uh, as uh, I'm trying to try to explain, Becca, you're going to have to help me explain this, but uh, we've just gone through and, and around the country what's called a redetermination on Medicaid benefits. So everybody who was on Medicaid, everybody, uh, was supposed to receive a letter that they had to respond to uh, in order to, uh, I get to keep them on Medicaid. And uh, it was supposed to just be routine. And what's happened in Florida is, I think now about two, Beck, is that right? About 200,000 
people in our county. Is it right in our county? In Florida. In Florida, 200,000 people in Florida somehow didn't get it and then didn't open their envelope, didn't return it. So we have hundreds of thousands of people who were eligible for, for Medicaid for healthcare that are now not gonna get it. And so I'm, I'm a little, uh, what that's gonna to mean to our healthcare system is a little bit unknown right now. Uh, do, have we gotten the numbers to Palm Beach County yet? We're trying to get that. That's what we're trying to get. Yeah. Yeah. No, we spent a lot of time with with all with all the healthcare providers. We had quite we had a couple of zooms to really make sure that their patients were were responding. So that's something that we're going to have to uh, really watch because it, what that can obviously people who are sick get other people sick or they stack up in the emergency room. So uh, it's um, something that's on the radar. Anyway, uh, let, let's see, anybody want to have anybody, hey, does anyone want to give me a different point of view? I'm happy to hear it. I think we're on board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even I'm, always, I'm, I'm always up for a good debate, I guess. <laughs> anyway, you know, uh, anybody else have any questions? So Representative Frankel, this is David Beale. Hi, David. Uh, hi, I, I hear that about a hundred Republicans voted against the, uh, the bill. Um, does that mean there's gonna be any challenge to McCarthy by... Uh, oh. Takes one, but he's got to. Yeah, pass. it just takes takes one to have to force us in that vote again. I don't have any insight into that. I heard some rumbling. I don't just don't know where they would go, even if they raised it. Uh, all they all they would all they would create would be another show, if you know what I mean. Another show. I think it was interesting. That in the end, more Democrats voted for the bill than the than the Republicans, even though Republicans had the majority. Uh, which, what what does that tell us? You know, the the our president gets knocked, got knocked. He was too quiet, low key. Yeah, that's why this negotiation worked. Because he didn't he 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 stayed low key. Had he tried, had he gone to, on TV and gone mano mano with the speaker, I don't, I think we'd still be debating the thing. The president will have a, uh, a, an address tonight, a primetime address. I will, I will tell you this, and I don't know if the, the president will say this. If, if, if you knew the kind of cuts that the Republicans wanted to force on us, you would be aghast. I don't really, I don't care what your political persuasion is, you would be have been aghast at, at what some of these cuts and why this negotiation was so intense. There are people, and listen, this is not, uh, I have, just, I'm not knocking all Republicans because <laughs> trust, trust me, most are very, I think, common sense. We may disagree on, we disagree probably on, a, you know, abortion for sure, but uh, most did not want to default. And uh, there are some in this Congress that would not have cared, that would have been delighted to see this country go into free fall. And I will tell you this, I, I spoke to just about every Democrat, you know, we, were, we, we had many, many meetings, we had many, many briefings these last 10 days, as I said, was very intense. I did not know one Democrat who was voted against the bill who would not have changed the vote, their vote, if it meant preventing the default. They told, they said, uh, if if my vote is needed, I will I will vote yes. Uh, so uh, I don't. It's a crazy. <laughs> we live in a crazy world. What can I tell you? It really is. 
Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions for Representative Frankel? Excellent opportunity. So let's leave it at this. Delray is one of the most fabulous places to live, no question. I want to give you all kudos. Uh, you think about it. Um, for a beautiful city there that's thriving. And uh, I enjoy, I, we work very, very closely with your government, your local government uh, to make sure they have, get the things that they need. Uh, I know there's a big push to uh, improve the water system, which is so important to everybody. And I'm hoping that uh, not only will we get them some community projects, but they're gonna benefit from the infrastructure money. And let me close with really a positive note. Yeah. I really want to say this because the, the, the you know, as, as um, my friend Michael reminded me, I've been involved in this a long time. And I will say the last, my la the last two years in, in Congress uh, were probably the most productive uh, periods of my political co career ever. And, and Joe, not, I mean, not because of me, I'm just saying I was fortunate to, be, to participate. Our president is an amazing guy. Yeah, I know he seems, he is a little bit uh, old, Gosh, he's older than me. That's hard to believe. But I can tell you this. He is, we Democrats, we have spent many hours with him. He is sharp. He's got a heart. And uh, with his leadership, we were able to get through COVID, saving businesses, getting the schools open. Uh, we passed an historic infrastructure bill and we see a modernization of our water systems and our, our, our transportation systems, the internet all over this country. We passed what's called the uh, chip bills so that we're going to be able to start manufacturing uh, the, the components, uh, uh, chip components that we need to produce cars and computers. Uh, we passed, uh, they call it the, we call it the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which contains, which is historically the biggest investment to fight climate change ever in this country. And uh, you will start, uh, we will start rolling out uh, the grant programs for individuals uh, to be able to get tax credits uh, for uh, taking actions and buying products that will help reduce uh, carbon in the air. So uh, what did I miss, Becca? Uh, I mean, the, um, are you still there? So, I mean, we've done, you got it. Did I miss, did I, did I miss another big one? Um, the infrastructure bill, Inflation Reduction Act, CHIPS. Um, I think those were the big ones last time. And and your bill and, passed. And the PAC bill, which uh, yes. for the first time now, makes sure that, that our veterans, veterans who suffered are in, uh, Agent Orange or other uh, chemical induced illnesses can now get the care that they deserve. So, uh, and, and, and here's the good news. This was all preserved in this debt reduction negotiation. So the, prog the progress continues. And I see one hand up. Danielle, you have a hand up? Yes, uh, good morning. I'm Danielle Iverson with Habitat for Humanity of Greater Palm Beach County. We've had the opportunity to actually visit your office in DC this past uh, March and speak with your staff. So just touching on affordable housing, can you just, um, give any insight on the conversations you're having on the Hill as it relates to affordable housing. That's a nationwide issue uh, clearly in Palm Beach County. I know that the state has passed SB 102 to address housing and the county with our um, housing bond too. So can you just talk uh, like what's happening on, happening on a national level? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> I think 
I mean, I think everybody here can agree uh, that housing has become uh, un unaffordable for too many people. Uh, it's something that I will tell you this. So it's again, I don't want to sound overly partisan, but I will tell you that Democrats talk about it all the time. We in our in our uh, infrastructure bill, which ended up being bipartisan, I want to say that was a bipartisan. At least the Senate was bipartisan. The um, we tried to include in it a very uh, big infusion of resources, and it. We could not, the House did pass it. We could not get an agreement in the Senate on it. So uh, I wish I could give you a better report. I, I am worried about the dollars that we use uh, to allow the local governments to uh, fund housing projects. I am worried about that uh, as, as, because as I said, our budget's gonna take a hit. So uh, I, I don't have really have too much good news from the federal government on that, other than to tell you that there are lots of people, including myself, who are concerned about it and will still be you know, looking for ways uh, to help. Now, I, you know, it's sort of sad that my community, I've had some of my community projects are for people who are unhoused. I mean, we got a uh, million dollars for the um, Lord's Place for family residents, we've gotten uh, money for a uh, a program that houses uh, youth who who who've uh, come out of foster care. Uh, we got money for the as we mentioned the Wayside House for their housing for women who are uh, fighting uh, drug abuse. So, were there any other housing projects, Becker? I think those were the. We also um, this is PRA in Lake Worth. Oh yeah, we we that's right. We we got money for Lake Worth for their and I, Sarah and I think they work with Habitat for Humanity and I, I think we put in another allocation for them this year also. So so I sort of nibbling around the edges, but I'm you know, look, I think I'm glad that at least our county you know is going to hopefully infuse some dollars and the state will now let go of dollars that, that was supposed to be dedicated for housing for many, many years. Thank you. And thank you for what your, your organization does. Thank you. Okay, all thank fun you. and games. Hey, uh, thank there's you, nothing Rick. else. Listen, thank, thank, listen, everybody, thank you. Don't, don't, you don't have to wait for Zoom if you have any questions, uh, concerns. We, uh, oh, our office is in Delray. How do you like that? But we're not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> we're not in the city. We're not in the city. We're not in the city. But we're, if four, you like, we're three and a half miles from the city. If you like, if you like to go west on Atlantic Avenue, you could come see us, but just pick up the phone or send us an email. We're happy to, to respond again. Uh, Delray Beach Chamber, thank you all for your your really good work, and um, we'll see you on the strip. Yeah, exactly. thank you so much. Thank you, Representative. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. It's your show now. We got we got to get uh, our partners on. Over to yeah, David. This is go, his this is to, his uh, part of the show. Go for it, David. Let's go to Chief Toby. Are uh, you still there, Chief? Waiting patiently. Hey, hey, one one point. Go to usdebtclock.org. Um, while we talked, the national debt went up almost twenty million dollars. If you want to, Michael, just Michael, Michael, let, let yeah. Chief tell me talk. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'll be real quick. Um, the fire department is doing very well. Um, as you know, we were short several firefighters, approximately uh, twenty four. And uh, we just hired, uh, we just finished a recruit class with 12. We had their graduation next Friday. Uh, we'll be probably hiring another six to eight uh, sometime in September, October. So we're, we're doing very well in the fire department. Um, do you it? have a fire department under construction over by Linton right now? Someone we do. Was asking we, we do. We, um, that was station 113. So that's mm -hmm. been uh, demolished. 
They've done some site work now on the on the site, and um, we're waiting on what's called a guaranteed maximum price, a GMP, and we should be bringing that to commission um, sometime either the next commission meeting, not the one Tuesday, uh, or the first one in uh, July. And once they get that approved, then they will start construction. You'll start seeing it come out of the ground. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Uh, I believe Laura Simon also has to run. So Laura, are you still there? Give us a quick report. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, David. Um, thank you to Stephanie and the Chamber for these meetings. It's um, very informative always, so appreciate it. Um, so the Downtown uh, Development Authority here in beautiful Delray Beach, as um, Lois Frankel just mentioned, we love that. Um, we are doing well. Um, we've hit summer pretty hard with our weather, as you can see. So um, making a big impact on some of the activations and events that our organization has been tasked to produce uh, for our downtown community. So we did have to reschedule um, our art and jazz on the avenue that was um, to be held last week um, because of the weather. And it was supposed to be on West Atlantic. And as you know, art and jazz, we were moving around our community to drive the economic impact to those different neighborhoods. So our May event was on West Atlantic in the West Atlantic neighborhood. So we'll be bringing that back in August. So we have determined that we'll do it August 23rd. Um, and um, that is also a partnership with the CRA. We've got some um, fun things that they're going to be showcasing there as well. So I wanna make sure that we had um, a really nice uh, event for the community for that. We are going to be doing one um, in July as well, and that'll be from Swinton to uh, 6th Avenue and on East Atlantic Avenue. So um, we are, so we're, you know, creating activities and events to bring people to downtown, back to our community, whether they're um, visiting or live here. So summer, we really were ramping up to, as Stephanie mentioned earlier, to with in partnership with the chamber and the city to uh, market our uh, community really strong this summer because we are at um, some pre-pandemic numbers um, as we see seasonal numbers. You know, we were lucky at post-pandemic to really spike unusually as a um, with our visitation. However, we're back to normal, um, seeing a fifty percent or um, drastic you know dip as we go into summer based on seasonal numbers. So we've started uh, what we're calling a, and also just really a hyper local um, targeting our local residents and you know giving them some incentives to be here in the summertime and come into our community. And it's called Love Delray. And we at the, it's um, on our website, downtowndelraybeach.com. We have a page, this is Love Delray and it's a really 20% off uh, opportunity, whether it's hotels or businesses, uh, to take advantage of as if you are a local resident. So take a look there, please. Um, if they're not participating, many of our other areas, all of our businesses do love our locals and uh, love and will love that you're there this summer because it's, uh, it's while it's wet and raining, it's very dry in the stores So and in restaurants. So please get out there. Um, we also are, um, you know, going into a, you know, our planning phase, budget phase, goal setting, uh, for summer, we'll be doing that, uh, between June and July, you know, as you know, our meetings are public and our, our organization is a government agency and governing over down the down, downtown district. We do meet the second Monday of every month uh, at noon here at the DDA office on, on Southeast first street. So please, um, pay attention. We'll send out our our agendas. We do have quite a few projects that come towards us to review for development, as well as some different uh, regulations and programs that are coming from the city. So ordinances or LDRs. So look for those, but then also um, if you do have interest and um, in the downtown and what the future holds, please you know plan to participate in our goal setting. So we'll make sure you all know that. We did have a great town hall with Bob Gibbs um, on May 17th. We brought him back to just review the shopability study and gave us some really great accolades that we've been doing really well from that study. So we do have that video on our website as well if you'd like to take a look at um, and I'll share that with Stephanie so she can she can share with you all. So 
Thank you. And I'm available for questions. I'll stay for the end. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Laura. Great report. A lot going on. Kudos to you. Thank you. Uh, let's go to uh, Renee. Uh, tell us about the CRA. What's what's happening there? Hi, everyone. A lot is happening at the CRA. Um, first, happy belated birthday, Stephanie. <laughs> Add that in there. <laughs> um, so we just had a board meeting yesterday where we started talking about our budget for next fiscal year. So stay tuned for that. We have a lot of major infrastructure projects that we've been talking about and I've been talking about over and over and over again, but I think it's important to remember um, the magnitude of, of work that we have probably into the hundreds of millions of dollars of infrastructure in the set in that we're just completing in Osceola Park. So I really wanna keep our, our residents, our, our board, our everyone here focused that we have to finish this infrastructure because it's really critical to a lot of people who live here. So a um, few updates, our 98 Northwest Fifth Avenue building is pretty much complete. We're looking for tenants. So if anybody knows of any small business who's looking for a space, we have about 650 square foot bays that are available. We have a, a pretty robust application process. It's online and the applications are due June 15th. Uh, also, as a reminder, our paint up and signage grant is still available district wide. Um, so please check that out. If you know any business who's looking for exterior paint or signage, we do have funds available for that. Also, um, it is June. So we've been working with the community members to create a Juneteenth roadmap, which is Juneteenth is coming up in a couple of weeks, but there's activities that are happening all throughout the month of June. So we created a pamphlet that can be passed out. It's also available on our website. So you can see all the activities that are going on around Juneteenth. Also, it'll direct you to our website to see some of the cool things that we have going on at the CRA. And if you want any of these to pass out, please just let me know and stop by our office. I'll get them to the chamber. Yes, we have tons. Um, also, Craft on the app is coming up on June 17th at Louis Wesley Plaza from one to five. There are vendor opportunities on an ongoing basis. We do have this going on throughout the year, uh, but we, you know, we are always, always looking for new vendors. And what else do we have here? And Arts Warehouse, it's first Friday art walk is tonight. We are featuring a Haitian uh, collection that's really beautiful. If you haven't stopped by, please do so. There's a collector, this exhibit was just in France and now it was shipped here in Crate. So um, it came a long way to be in Delray Beach, but it is gorgeous. Please feel free to come by. Uh, we're, we'll be there for first Friday art walk tonight, but it's on display until next month. And we're starting up a summer social and so maybe fall social where we'll have evenings where CRA staff will be available at a location to be disclosed. But if you ever have any questions about CRA or if you wanna know more about CRA, uh, we're gonna be rotating this around. So please stay tuned. I'll have more updates at our next meeting, but I just wanted to put that bug out that that is something that we are starting. And we have a quarterly update that um, a video so to check out. I'm going to send all of this to you on links that are on our website. So, and always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or stop by at the CRA. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Great report. Any questions for Renee, CRA? Okay, uh, let's go to the city. Jeff Oris, uh, assistant city manager. Are you still there, Jeff? I'm, I'm here. Great. Uh, as always, lots going on here. Uh, I wanted to mention first that uh, the city's Pride Fest is happening uh, a week from this weekend, June 10th, I believe is the date. As part of that, we'll also be repainting the Pridescape intersection. Um, so that will happen possibly next Monday is when it's scheduled, but based on weather and what's going on with FEC as well, uh, that may move to later in the week. It'll probably mean that that intersection will remain closed through Pridescape on the following weekend. So be aware of that. Uh, we are continuing to work on the city's special events policy. No radical changes in there at all, uh, but we are trying to make sure that we're trying to make the process a little bit easier for folks as well as better defining um, what we're supporting financially through the city uh, as far as some of the nonprofits and who will be doing that. Um, the first budget workshop is coming up on new, June 13th. That'll be basically the, the first time the commission will be getting into next year's budget. That'll be in place for October 1. So 
keep an eye on what's going on there. I'm trying to think of what else might be going on in the city that I haven't jumped to the top of my head. Oh, of course, you know, uh, I think I, I'm personally looking forward to interaction with the tourism roundtable on the tourism master plan on the, uh, with the roundtable on June 20th. So that, I think that's kind of an important one that we're all looking forward to. That's my quickie update. Uh, oh, because I know it's of concern to many people. Yes, Sarah Maxfield left the city and we have posted the economic development job. The city has downgraded that job from economic development director to economic development manager, mostly because I'm gonna be, I myself am gonna be taking a more personal role in economic development. I have 30 years of experience in economic development. So I don't want anybody to think that the downgrading in that position means that the city is in some way abandoning economic development. Matter of fact, I'll be putting a lot more time into it. So we're actually expanding the role a little bit of what we're doing there. And if you have any questions about that, of course, I'm always available to answer it. We've got a couple of applicants I'm looking forward to interviewing shortly. Uh, and hopefully we'll have that position filled in, in quick time. That's what I got. Thank you, Jeff. Um, good luck with the economic development. Uh, very you. important for our city. Uh, let's go now to uh, Kent Edwards, uh, sustainability officer. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, we have a lot going on and start out with trees. Uh, June 14th is the end of the year two planting uh, effort and um, including the trees that uh, we planted just yesterday and 11 more trees that uh, we may get in before June 14th. Uh, we'll bring a total of 1,997 trees that were given away and planted of the 2,000 that is in the agreement. So we are, are right on target with that. We're really happy with the diversity of the trees and the locations of those and uh, the effort that we have got in place working with all of the, the departments. And in the coming year, the agreement for year three has already been signed. We have multiple sites of about 200 uh, tree locations that we have already uh, identified. So we uh, uh, will have a very good start for year three uh, tree planting. And uh, on July 11th, I'll be making an annual report to uh, commission uh, with, with a summary of, of that planting information. We also have monitoring of the year one plantings that, that we are doing to uh, you know, give background on on how we might be able to improve and also to justify the, the funding that's going towards tree planting. So thus far, we have about a third of uh, the trees that were planted in year one surveyed. We have 7.5% uh, mortality, which in the, um, in the journals is a very good level, but we're looking for ways that we can even increase that. Um, and, and there are some, some things that we have already identified, but good to have that monitoring information to, to show how our tree planting effort is going. Um, switching gears over to greenhouse gas. Uh, I made a greenhouse gas inventory presentation to commission on May 16th. And um, in that were goals for 50% emission reduction by 2030 and net zero by 2050. And in September, and then I'll be making a presentation with a plan outline for things that we need to do in order to uh, achieve those greenhouse gas reductions and uh, other stuff. But I'll, I'll leave it there unless there are questions. Thank you, Kent. Thank you for uh, all you do. It's a, it's a real important area for Delray being a coastal town. Uh, let's go to Jackie Ramirez. She had to go, but she posted oh. her information on her summit in the chat because we're running a little late right now. So I think that's it. Um, okay, well, let's go to Stephanie up, Mumu then. Stephanie okay, Mumu. so um, we've got a few things. I just want to touch upon the nonprofit council's meeting next Tuesday. They're going to have an excellent panel with Career Source, EJS Project, um, Community uh, Spirit of Giving Network. It's going to be an excellent panel discussion at nonprofit council. It's usually almost standing room only in those events. So it's well open to nonprofits, obviously, but for friends of nonprofits or people who want to partner with nonprofits, please feel free to join us. 
We've got our roundtables this month. The real estate roundtable is Thursday. It's June 8th. Um, we're going to be hearing from um, the Palm Beach County Property Appraisers Office, and it's going to be at Sklar. Um, that's at 930. Contacts and cocktails. Um, we're going to be having at Penny Lanes on June 15th. That's out west. That'll be fun. The tours of roundtable that Jeff mentioned is going to be Tuesday, June 20th. It's at 10 a.m. at the Chamber, and we're going to be hearing from Susanna Laura of the DDA and Don, who is our consultant on the implementation plan for Tourism Master Plan. And last but not least, um, YPAT will be meeting at Barrel of Monks, I think, which is in Boca on Wednesday, June 28th. So those are all the updates that we have for the Chamber, and I think that's it, unless anyone has anything else. All nope. good. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us today, everyone, and have a great weekend. You as well. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.